Hi guys and girls, welcome to the print of you webinar here at uh, PLN Group. Today we have our partner, uh, we have invited Dimension, and we have Greg. And nice to see you here, Greg. You're coming from Germany to give us an introduction for the products here. Um, let me know what we can, can we expect from you today. Uh, hi Kurt, thank you very much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here at PLM. Uh, yeah, so on today's webinar, we are going to learn something about dimension technology and the role that it plays in uh, additive manufacturing. So how to turn your raw part that you get from the print printer into a high value product that we see in our everyday lives. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, please join us. Just at the beginning, let me tell you a few words about my company, uh, where we are, uh, well, where do we come from, and what do we actually do. Yeah, so um, right now we are almost 70 people, uh, founded in 2015 uh, in the heart of Europe, which is Munich in Germany, beautiful Bavaria. And uh, yeah, so we got a fantastic team of uh, R&D that develops all the machines and processes. Uh, we have our, you know, fantastic service team that uh, implements the machine in uh, all over the world, actually, because we we have more than 420 machines running in the in the world. And we have a fantastic sales team as well as uh, some administration and great marketing stuff. Yeah, so uh, all of a sudden we have uh, one uh, one target, which is um, turn uh, the raw part into high value product. Yes, uh, so we think that uh, there is a huge difference uh, between uh, what you can actually get from your 3D, 3D printer to the part that you see in your everyday lives. Yes, so uh, the whole team uh, is, is, is developing this process right now. Yes, so uh, behind these processes stands something what is the tema for our next chapter, which is uh, turning the print into product with a particular technologies. These technologies is called a print to product platform. Yeah, we developed four different machines that allow to turn your raw part into high value product. All these four machines are working independently and are responsible for a different process uh, that allows us to get to the certain level uh, of quality that we are used to with the traditional methods like injection molding. So um, the first step that actually the 3D printer users are uh, challenging with is cleaning of the parts. Yes, so the current methods that we have available on the market are actually coming from uh, processing the metal parts when we're, which we're with a very brutal force, you need to clean uh, the rust or uh, spray paint from the metal parts and the sufficiently sufficiency of of, uh, of the machine and technology is being defined by how brutal it is. In plastic parts is something very opposite. So our goal was to deliver the technology that would dismiss the problems that appears like um, the remaining fingerprints, uh, powder residue that stays on the part, or simply burnt marks if um, the blasting nozzle was too close to the, to the surface. Therefore, we developed a machine which we called PowerShot C. C stands for cleaning. This automatic blaster allows you to get rid of the remaining powder residue within 10 minutes where you actually put the parts inside and uh, expose them to a blasting media that very that are you know distributed with a very gentle power uh, and with anti-static air that allows you to get rid of the powder sufficiently and automatically um, this process saves lots of time, allows you to scale up very quickly. So uh, the additioning another printer to your workshop 
is a question of your capacity, not of your limitations. Second machine that works on a similar basis, but uh, works for different purposes is PowerShot S, where S stands actually for surfacing. This technology uh, allows us to get certain level of uh, surface smoothness, uh, where instead of the glass beads, like it happened in PowerShot C, we are using small plastic balls, which is the propriety of dimension. And these small plastic balls heat the surface and therefore unifies the surface, uh, flattens the hills that with the mass fulfills the valleys that are appearing in the, in the uh, 3D printed part. Yeah, thanks to this uh, technology and thanks to this process, we are preparing the surface for further coloring as well as we create surface which is semi-gloss, which has a semi-gloss appearance and uh, it's uh, much more scratch resistant. So the part does not get worn out quickly. However, for some customers, this process was not sufficient enough. They were looking for something more. They were looking for a sealed surface parts. Therefore, we would like to introduce you to our youngest child which is the PowerFuse S. So this technology was selected uh, for, uh, by, by the uh, European Innovation Council for the Horizon 2020 program uh, that has a target to contribute the European climate goals. Uh, so we will become the CO2 neutral and, and so we will def define only green technologies. So the vapor that we are using over there is completely safe. Uh, it's being used in the pasture industry, it's being used in a, a cosmetics industry, and uh, there is no risk for, for uh, implementation, implementation of, the of this machine in the factory shop floor. Yeah, uh, this technology allows us to get a defined surface finish, uh, which is comparable to injection molding. Yes, uh, therefore, it allows us to get the part which is completely sealed, and can be easily washed, spray painted, or can or uh, will have a very very improved friction. Uh, it's uh, extremely useful for such industries like automotive, uh, food in, food packaging industry, or or uh, in where, wherever you need to perform the spray painting. Um, the, to give you comparison, how can we compare surface roughness with the power fuse S to uh, vapor fuse? Um, the surface roughness can be reduced to uh, 86%. It means that the, the hills and valleys are much more flattened. So uh, what's, wh where, where is it used? Yes, one of these uh, very, very important applications is the fluid transportation, where we simply increase the uh, flow and uh, we performed a small experiment, as you can see here. So we simply pour down the water through the pipe. So even the most uh, complicated geometries, uh, we, we, we are able to smooth inside. Yes, the power shot S, as it's a mechanical process and even more tumbling, you will not be able to, to, to smooth the, uh, the interior of the pots. Here, it simply works. So um, he, in this particular case, we measured the surface roughness with a surface scanner and we reduced it internally for 80%. Uh, thanks to that, we are able to implement additive manufacturing technologies to the application where airflow or fluid flow plays a significant role. Second very uh, interesting application is spray painting. Uh, where uh, by reducing the surface roughness, we are reducing all, also the absorption of, of liquid uh, of the part. Therefore, we, don't, we are uh, minimizing the amount of primer or even we're dismissing it. That has to be applied before spray painting. And obviously we are removing, uh, we are uh, minimizing the amount of layers. Therefore, we are minimizing the influence on the geometry as well as the time that we require for spray painting. The uh, third thing is the improved air tightness, where a uh, sealed pot performs much better under the pressure test. Uh, therefore, uh, we can reduce the number of material, we can create a new, we cre can, we can create new design, and uh, mm, uh, we, can, we can perform 3D, we can you know, place the 3D printed parts 
uh, inside of very, very important automotive in, uh, applications. Uh, addition, another um, important aspect of this, this technology is the reduction of friction of the parts. So uh, we also perform to the test. It's very important for a uh, packaging industry where you simply transport the, the parts. So uh, therefore we are able to easily uh, grab the part with a robotic arm and put it into the package. Uh, obviously improved stability, uh, so the process has an impact on the, on the mechanical properties of the part, which improves its flexibility, reduce uh, embrittlement and uh, increase the stability. Uh, bacteria protection, obviously on the smooth parts, uh, the bacteria are growing much, much less likely than on the rough parts. Uh, we also performed certain tests where we were able to see uh, what's, uh, what are the results, which actually here were pretty astonishing. Uh, washable surface for food and medical uh, application is where uh, we performed very, very amateur tests. Uh, so we simply uh, put some, some, some oil and ketchup on the, on the part and uh, then we, we, we simply wiped it and we noticed that Obviously, uh, we noticed this under the, under the microscope. We noticed that the uh, remaining uh, residues are, are much lower on the uh, sealed parts. Uh, it's also used for, uh, for uh, um, automotive industries where sealed parts simply does not absorb so, many, so, so much oil. Um, so the smoothing uh, technology is absolutely a uh, uh, let's say it's a second step where we want to apply the additive manufacturing technologies to uh, um, application where our customers are used uh, to certain quality with uh, injection molding. Yes, therefore, so injection molding simply placed the certain quality uh, that is always a reference for us. But if we will take a look around, what's uh, are the plastic parts that are in our environment, we see that they have a certain characteristic, which is actually the color. Therefore, the color plays a significant role in our lives. It's not only the aesthetic thing, but it's, uh, it's uh, applying appropriate characteristic. Red parts will always be, a we are, will be assigned to the emergency. Um, we can always notice the police has either blue or, or a dark green, I mean dark, dark uh, blue, or like royal um, colors. Yes, therefore uh, the coloring plays a significant role to get to the certain applications if we are considering manufacturing and user parts. The dimension technology uh, actually is, was the origin of dimension technology is coming from the DM60. So the machine that allows you to dye parts in a certain colors without changing the, the part mechanical properties and the geometry. Uh, in industrial manners, we should always consider the repeatability of the process, how safe it is and how, um, how we can track it. Uh, therefore, the DM60 is really industry 4.0 ready. It means that we can, it applies to all these things and it can be tracked via internet. So um, a machine works very, very uh, easy. Uh, you are providing us a couple of information about your project, like a material where, where you, which you used for, for manufacturing the part. Uh, obviously the color and how many parts you would like to you, you would like to dye. All this information we use to manufacture the cartridge uh, where the recipe is stored on our computer. Uh, cartridge is uh, being manufactured in our facility so we are sure that everything is done according to your requirements. We ship the cartridge to you uh, and all the information that you provided to us are stored on an RFID chip. Therefore, we scan this chip and simply place the cartridge inside of the machine, press start and leave it for like two and a half hours. The um, coloring is obviously is that the appearance. Therefore, everything what we do, uh, and we need everything what we actually create has to, uh, need, in, in industrial manners, needs to be very repeatable. 
uh, obviously the brighter base we have, uh, the, the better uh, color quality we'll get. Yes, uh, so um, and the MJF paths are grayish. Thanks to PowerShot C uh, process, we can get brighter gray for on their external surfaces. Therefore, we can create uh, brighter colors, but obviously there are certain limitations. Uh, recently, we created a sophisticated uh, variety for, for MJF colors where uh, but to give you a best impression, I would like to start from the, from the beginning, how it happened. So in 2015, uh, we were focused on SLS coloring, so, so simply white-based. Uh, one year, so we, we created 17 standard colors, which matched actually every time, you know, were geometry independent and uh, were delivering always the same results. Uh, obviously, the world is not colored just in 17 colors. Uh, customers were asking for uh, different specific colors that were their identity, like we have Coca-Cola red, we have a Lamborghini yellow, uh, we have Magenta T-Mobile, yes? So these customers were looking for a color, they were, they were looking for an application in 3D printing that can be actually dyed in these colors. Therefore, we started our laboratory where we performed the color matching. In 2018, uh, we were able to show off with the, our RAL colors, where we made, where we presented over 180 colors uh, that are assigned to RAL poly. In 2019, we, considering the customers uh, who are manufacturing for automotive industry, we realized that it's not only how the part looks like, but also how it behaves like. Therefore, in automotive industry, the most important factor is that this part will be uh, UV resistant. It will not fade under the UV radiation during the certain period of time. And there is actually an isonorm that regulates the deviation of the color when the part is placed in the automotive interior. We, in 2019, allowed ourselves to launch the extended color um, line, which uh, was considered for uh, UV stability or neon colors that actually shine under the UV uh, radiation. Uh, and very recently, in April 2020, we presented officially for the first time the first 17 colors for MJF technology, where the grayish background plays a significant role, but we are able to perform the nice coloring Color your grays. This is our motto, and uh, because the world is not just gray, yeah, we are looking for uh, we're looking forward to uh, different applications. We are looking to make the parts uh, differently than than just gray, because we are using MJF not only for prototyping but for manufacturing the real uh, life parts. Currently, seventy standard seventeen standard colors uh, that reflects. Uh, little bit the, the, the real living applications like uh, turquoise, forest, meadow, maybe camel. So these colors actually are the basis from which we can start the further color development. Yes, with these colors we can reach to uh, new, uh, new applications for automotive or medical, medical where you need to perform uh, you, you, where the aesthetics plays the key role and how, how this actually, how these parts are actually behaving. Yeah, uh, what is important is that if you are already the user of the DM60, there is no need to change your machine. You simply order the second cartridges that cost actually exactly the same. Yeah, so uh, mm, I recommend to, to get in touch with PLM or with us where uh, you will get the, the brochure, how it works, uh, how to start, uh, what are the different, uh, how it works with the different processes. Yeah, so let me just summarize what we can get. How can we finish your parts uh, with, uh, with the MJF, from MJF technology? Yes, so everything actually starts from cleaning. Yes, uh, the customers, mm, the more parts they produce, the more they struggle. Yes, with the PowerShot C, we are able to really get nice clean parts immediately. 
then we are going for coloring. If we are talking about uh, black paths, we start with the DM60. And uh, DM60 allows us to get, the, for example, black paths, then we can polish shot it at the end. Which, so we invert the process. First we dye, then we uh, polish shot it, so surface it. And therefore we are able to get nice smooth uh, surface finish. With a power fuse where the, where the uh, smoothness plays the significant role, this is inverted. First we perform the smoothing, then we perform the dyeing. Uh, it happens because um, no, the solvent that is not being used uh, during the process, during the smoothing process, is, stays in the circle. Therefore, we are afraid that there could be a contamination, and it will not play. Uh, it, it will not play the difference. Uh, it will it will play a significant difference if we will if we will start with the power fuse, uh, put the DM60, and then we'll turn the, to the power fuse S. In coloring the parts, it looks different. Yes, so white MJF parts, we are performing cleaning. Then we can perform surfacing with a power shot S or power fuse, then the DM60 to apply the appropriate colors. Uh, full color parts can be easily cleaned with a power shot C, then we can smooth them with the power fuse. Uh, obviously, we can talk. But this theoretical knowledge will never give you the same impression than sending us your part, perform the benchmark, and uh, get your parts finished with the dimension technology. Therefore, I highly encourage you to contact us or my colleague from PLM to uh, send your parts, yes, and get desired finishing options. Yes, therefore, you will have the complete impression how can we do this and what can we get. For more insights, I recommend to read our white papers that uh, presents more detailed information about all the processes that we were discussing during this, during this webinar. Thank you very much, Craig, for this great introduction to the, to the post-processing uh, equipment here. Um, it was very, very interesting uh, to see. Thanks a lot, Kurt. It was a pleasure to be in the interview. I hope you enjoyed the webinars, guys, and yeah, thank you very much, Kurt. And if you all have, first of all, thank you for attending. And if you have further questions for Dimension or for PLM Group, please have a look on the next slide where you can see all the contact details.